are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. How to become an IELTS trainer. Hello there, IELTS students. In this tutorial, Daphne and myself will be sharing how how we became involved in IELTS and for this tutorial is also for the tutors who are listening, both the native English speakers and the non-native English speakers, because we do have a lot of them. We used to have a course and a forum as well for the IELTS teachers. We've re we've closed it temporarily, but we'll probably be reopening that uh, later. So anyway, how are you doing, Daphne? I'm really well, thank you, Ben. All going really going going well. Lots of the test centres are reopening, so it's busy, busy at the moment, which is fantastic. Yeah, it seems like we're really around the corner. I mean, in Europe, at least, I think in some countries, coronavirus is still having a massive impact. But at least in Europe, it seems normality is slowly returning. Would you agree? Absolutely. It's a different kind of normal, but yeah. I think it's really reassuring for people to be able to uh, do their exams again. Uh, I think, you know, obviously it's nice for everybody to be able to go out again. Um, but I think, you know, when you've been working towards an exam for a goal and everything and you're, you're kind of, you're stuck, you're suspended um, for three months. It's a long, long time. But yeah, with test centers reopening and students taking exams again and getting great results. So it's, it's good. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And I, I think uh, one thing that I keep telling myself during all of this is um, that I'd, with all this frustration, because it is frustrating for us here at uh, IELTS.com because we're correcting students' essays. Lots of students are emailing us saying, oh, um, the test center's closed, I don't know what to do. There's a lot of frustration around at the moment. And one thing I keep telling myself is just like move forward, just keep moving forward. Um, and, you know, that's how you're going to get answers. You're not going to get answers just sat, sat there thinking and thinking and thinking and getting yourself worked up. It's a usually action and moving forward is the best way to deal uh, with these issues. Um, so, Daphne, in as you know, we're going to be talking about IELTS um, training and it's basically aimed, this tutorial, as I said, is aimed at the tutors who listen to IELTS podcast, so we might be speaking a little bit faster than normal. Um, Good practice. But how, exactly, yeah, ben, how, yeah. did, how did you get into IELTS? Good question, actually. Well, I did my Erasmus in Spain and after university, well, during university, and then I did the last year as, a, as an Erasmus student, which is an exchange program. And basically, I ended up in Valencia, and there was a lot of demand for English teachers. Mm. And I thought, okay, I'll give this, I'll give it a try, but, you know. And basically, I just got thrown into a classroom with a textbook, and oh, I no. was like, what? Uh, but fortunately, uh, I kind of, I, I just had this inner feeling that I really like this, you know. I mean, at first, it was a challenge. I was a bit, I was a little bit lost, but soon... I was like, I was really enjoying it. I was, I loved getting the results for students. And so, yeah, I was really pleased. And then eventually I started in a, in an elite business school in Valencia oh, wow. called Adem. That, yeah. And yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. This is what kind of opened up the door for me for IELTS because um, I realized that with the exam preparation, you're kind of, you're judged by results, not by how many students like you, which is the usual sort of like, you know, the usual <laughs> standard in a lot of private academies, get yeah. along with the students, make them smile and you keep your job, which I thought was pathetic because if you're results orientated, you want to get your students pass. Yeah. Uh, you want to give them results. You want to get them speaking the language, you know, and exam preparation is the best way to find out like which strategies are working, what's getting results for the students and what's not and what, what isn't. So, yeah, when I was doing this exam preparation, um, that kind of led into IELTS. First, it led me to specialize into exam preparation. Then it led me to specialize in, in IELTS. And mm. I just wanted to get better and better so that's how I started the podcast because I was like okay if I do a podcast I can reach all the experts 
in our oh, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first episodes, I was interviewing lots of the experts, and I still we still do that. Um, and yeah, it's just a case of just getting better and more specialization, more specialized specialization until I got um, all the knowledge that I. I still want more knowledge, of course, but I got enough knowledge to build a course and I discovered enough sort of like secrets and techniques from all these tutors. And yeah. eventually I just put it all into one course, which I'm remaking at the moment, actually. So, yeah. Oh, good. That's and quite... it's a huge, yeah, and it's a huge exam, isn't it? It's a, you know. Oh, it's, it's humongous. Yeah, it's like, it's the biggest but... IELTS, it's the biggest English exam globally, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I read the other day, 3.5 million tests were taken last year. I assume that's last year, not this year. But 3.5 million tests crazy, and 1,600 test centers all over the world. So yeah. it's a huge business, isn't it? Yeah, there's countries with less population than 3.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we jump into it, before we start uh, going any further, Daphne, how did you get involved in IELTS? Well, I went into teaching um, after having worked in lots of other um, industries and lots of I worked in um, finance and in design. Um, but then I did, so I'd done a degree already. And then I did my uh, CELTA. So CELTA is the most widely recognized and the best uh, starting to teacher qualification. Mm -hmm. And you need to have a degree in order to do CELTA. CELTA is run by Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a diploma, uh, sorry, that's a, a qualification. Um, and that, so that was the beginning of my teaching. And then I taught um, in a language school and uh, taught all sorts of levels, um, as Ben said. Um, but I used to watch these IELTS teachers because there was a, IELTS was rather revered. I mean, it is still revered. So it was the, you know, oh, that's an IELTS class and he's an IELTS teacher. <laughs> and so I wanted to know what was going on. Um, and we had a lot of Arabic students then um, who were studying for university, wanted to get to university in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so after a, a while, you know, enough experience teaching, um, I was allowed to teach these IELTS classes, uh, which I absolutely loved. It was really exciting, um, high pressure, but um, to have the challenge of really working with students who had a, a goal, who had a really important and you know high stakes aim. I think that was very satisfying. Absolutely, yeah. and it's a good point that actually that's another reason I kind of forgot, um, uh, not forgot, but I just didn't mention is that teaching motivated students is a is worlds apart from teaching a student who's been forced to go to the class. And yeah. It just makes it it makes it so much more rewarding. You can move faster. You're both on the same page. You're both going for the same goal, and yeah. It, you know, it just makes everything so much better when you've got um, motivated students and you're going preparing for a test such as the IELTS is a really sort of like a high objective to aim for and it just makes it yeah, easier. Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. so what kind of teachers are the British, uh, well, what kind of teachers are, th are the institutions looking for well, the, I mean, the British Council, obviously, who control the whole IELTS exam, um, they want to make sure that anyone associated with IELTS are very well qualified teachers. So mm -hmm. they, there's specifically for an IELTS teacher, you should have a degree first. Um, and that shows that you've got the qualifications and the higher level academic ability. So it doesn't matter, I don't think, what your degree is in. Ben, does it? No, no. As a, um, yeah. In in the UK and in the West, actually, it's quite common for students to get a degree, and that degree doesn't show, only show that they're a specialist in that subject, but it also shows that they can learn to a certain ability. So yeah. if a student has a degree in history, they can still apply for a job in marketing because, you know, they've got, they can learn, they've shown that they can learn to a certain ability. And I think this is a similar approach with regards to teaching English. Obviously, if you've got a degree in linguistics or in English language, it's better. However, um, for a, most teaching jobs, you need a teaching quality, you need a degree in, uh, you need to have, you need to be at the level of degree level. That's what I want yeah. to say, mincing my yeah. words. And then as also, have to you also have to complete a teacher training 
um, such as uh, CELTA. Yeah. And the CELTA is a month course and there's others as well. There's Trinity run courses, there's other courses, but you want to get the, the most highly qualified one you can. And CELTA is a very intensive month. Um, mm. And on your first day, you are given a class. And that was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> um, but so you're training and teaching all the way through that month. Um, and uh, you know, that, that gives you, you know, a really, really good start. Absolutely, um, yeah. And then after that, you need experience. And that's what we were talking about before. You need to have at least three years, I recommend, uh, before you start doing IELTS because you need to have the confidence that, um, of teaching various different skills. Um, and, and also you need to be confident in the grammar and to know why you're teaching what you're teaching. Exactly. Exactly. This is one of the reasons why I started the IELTS podcast because I was like, okay, I'm going to try and capture the knowledge, the experience that other tutors have gained over their ex over their career and yeah and it was yeah it was pretty successful like i learned an absolute lot an absolute ton and i'm still learning in yeah. each week and all of that knowledge is going into the course and getting transferred to the students so but anyway for the teachers listening if you find one of those uh like the career tutors hang around those uh, ask them questions ask you know if you've got a problem with any anything in the, with the with the IELTS exam or with the teaching or you know it might just be discipline it might be grammar rules just ask them um, because this is how you're going to improve and they'll share certain nuggets that you just cannot find in courses yeah. you know I, that's the best advice I mean there was a wonderful teacher where I used to work and the best advice he gave me is make sure you know where the answers are before you walk into that classroom. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so true because, it, you know, if you're in a hurry or you're running late, you know, you just don't wing it. Just make sure you absolutely know you've read the text. If you're going to make the students read something, make sure you've read it as well and you know where the answers are. Because sure, as anything somebody will say well why is that answer true or not given or false or whatever yeah and you need to be able to say why exactly yeah exactly good class preparation yeah uh, and yeah i used to map my classes down plan them down to like 10 minute intervals and i always used to like over plan just mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't because i wanted fast not fast classes, but I wanted to to be punchy. I didn't want it to be slow moving. That's what I want to say. So they were yeah. always quite fast. They were always quite packed, value packed, and I always like over planned exercises. And um, yeah, so good preparation, good uh, good tip there from Daphne. So Daphne, what's your opinion regarding native and non-native English speakers for teaching IELTS? I think this has really changed over the years, actually. I think, mm. to be honest, um, I've worked with some incredible teachers who are non-native, um, who are, who've done the exam, they've got that experience of having actually taken it, incredibly good at grammar. Um, so I think they have the confidence. So I think it really depends on the standard of the teacher. So for me, the actual language speaking, I mean, it, obviously, if you're practicing for a speaking exam, to have a native speaker is incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. um, Good but I think in I think in terms of the actual nitty gritty of the exam, I think if your teacher knows what they're doing, then I would argue that it really shouldn't be an issue. Excellent point there. Excellent. And when I was teaching in Spain, I found that a lot of native English speakers from Ireland, from England basically were just wandering into the academy they got a job because they were native english speakers but they had no desire for teaching they just had a desire to collect beer money uh you know <laughs> get paid and then just yeah. finish they only got the job because they were native english speakers and i think that's terribly unfair but in their defense that's all the Spanish market was asking for was this obsession with native English speakers, native English speakers. Yeah. Um, so really, you need to, um, for, if you are teaching and you're a non-native English speaker, I would personally, I would focus on where my where I've got my advantage. Maybe um, I know grammar rules inside out. Yeah. Maybe I, I know some good pronunciation tricks because 
um, you know, for example, if I'm Polish and I'm teaching Polish students, then I can explain certain sounds, how they should be to that Polish speaker. You know? Yes, you have an inside track, which exactly. is very useful. Exactly. And I think, yeah, especially if you've done the exam yourself, then you know what your students are going to be facing and you can really empathize. I think that's very important. You can understand the exam from a student's perspective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And even even like speaking for two minutes on a topic, you know, um, write out your essays, your task ones and your task twos. Just the other day, I was writing out a task two essay for the course overhaul that I'm doing. I'm just updating it, adding some new mm. information. And as I was writing it out, I realized I'd gone off topic, you know. So it's just yeah. small things like this that are good reminders. And not just do the test once and forget about it, but... If you can, maybe do a test every couple of months or even a shorter period, but it just keeps you on your toes. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, really, really important point there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And where should a teacher sort of like start out the research? Well, assuming you've got your experience and you're working in a school or wherever and you're kind of happy with what you're doing, the best thing would be to start testing yourself, as we were saying. So just under exam conditions, explore some of the websites which offer uh, train off, offer practice tests. And we've talked about this before. Um, British Council do it. IDP do it. And you can look at you can practice your listening and your reading. So you can do an actual test mm -hmm. uh, time conditions. You can get your results on that. And then you can practice writing a task one in uh, in 20 minutes and a task two in 40 minutes, the essays mm -hmm. uh, for academic in general. Show that to one of your colleagues, see what they think, get some feedback, which is always the most important thing to do. You could send it and in then, to us for feedback too. Hey, yes, give you feedback. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say you're a teacher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, yes, send it in. That'd be fantastic. Um, and then look at some of the speaking topics. So really try and see the see the exam from the student's point of view. Excellent. And then see how good see how good you are. Exactly. Yeah. And also get familiar not only with the format, but the criteria. You need to know the criteria inside out. You need to know which like grammar structures correspond to which band, which uh, band scores your students are aiming for, teach those structures. And this is what we've done with our online course, both for the writing and the speaking. Um, you know, you need to have a clear map for your students. And starting off with the criteria, which is official material, because there's a lot of material out there, and you're best starting with the okay. official stuff. Um, but there are rumours that the public band criteria that IELTS IDP British Council publish is not that far away from the one that the examiners use. So you're definitely off to a good start if you start yeah. with the official material. It does. You're right. It just gives you the whole, it, uh, the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, the the details of what people, what the examiner is looking for, and also then therefore what you should be aiming to encourage your students towards when you're teaching. Exactly. And it's really good. You know. Also, I mean, share that with your students. It's important that they know what they're being graded on. Mm -hmm. Excellent point there. Excellent point. It brings us brings me on to the next point, which is when you start out teaching IELTS. A great place to start is to identify what your students are struggling with. This is exactly what we do with our online course. Um, one of the first things we do is we give them a few tutorials, a few exercises, but then we get them writing essays because this way we can identify which where they're, where they're losing points. We can work on those points and we find that the students through this feedback improve significantly faster yeah absolutely this is like a little uh, needs analysis which you would do with your students anyway but mm -hmm. by working out what um mistakes they're making what they're really strong at because a lot of students have an amazing vocabulary <clears throat> yet lack the coherence of getting the essay in the right kind of formula for an mm. IELTS exam. And I find that often actually sort of a really, really impressive vocabulary, but it's a little bit all over the place with the organization. And it, then once you've identified that that is a problem area, it, it's not too difficult to sort of work it back into the right shape. Um, and I think for the students as well, as you say, to to have that 
point it out. You know, mm -hmm. you're really, really strong at this, but this is something that you need to work at or you need to get more grammar into the essay or, you know, you're making grammar mistakes, which you really shouldn't be at this level. Um, this identifying the needs is, is very important because then you can orientate the course and orientate your feedback towards meeting those needs. Absolutely. And just one thing that we do emphasize here at IELTS Podcast when we're giving corrections back is we identify what the student did right. And this is incredibly <laughs> important because I remember when I remember vividly, I would get my Spanish essays back when I was learning how to, um, when I was learning Spanish and I was writing an essay in Spanish, I'd get it back. It would just be an um, a document and it was just red pen crosses this is wrong question marks saying like I don't understand this and it was just absolute mess and everything that was wrong had been pointed out but nothing that had been done right had been shown you know I'd put a lot of effort into a grammar structure and some beautiful vocabulary and it just went unnoticed so I didn't know if oh. it was great I didn't know whether I should do it again it just went unnoticed and I thought this is horrendous especially in exam condition and not the exam conditions but especially we've got the frustration and the stress of the test on the horizon and all your tutor is doing is saying this is rubbish this is rubbish you need this you need that it's not a good way to study it's not a good way to that's prepare so, students yeah that's so demoralizing i mean you you need to you need to highlight the good stuff i mean that's, that's, exactly I mean, yeah correction is not about red pen exactly that's a good so that's a good succinct way of putting it yeah so this is why when we do out when we give our feedback to our students we are really highlighting not only what they've done wrong but really emphasizing what they've done right just mm. to make sure that they do it again and again and again yeah positive feedback absolutely it's what you need exactly and just one other thing um well when you are in an academy you're probably going to be surrounded by tutors and use that resource ask them you know ask them for help ask them how they teach this grammar point you would be surprised and this is what got me started with IELTS podcast was at first I was asking um, a few tutors in the academy I was teaching and I got some great feedback and I was like right I can get more of this if I start interviewing more tutors and this is exactly what I did I started interviewing and we still do it various subject matter experts and all of this knowledge eventually went into the online course so um, yeah, they use these advice. resources. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Take advantage and, uh, of it. And also, you know, exactly, teachers who you're working with, you know, they've all got a lot of experience as well, and mm -hmm. everyone's happy to share. And um, I learned very early on that it's absolutely okay to say that you don't understand something or how could you do it better. And mm -hmm. I think people really want, you know, collaborative teacher is the best. You know, people want to be able to share their experience. And I'm, um, you know, always mm -hmm. really happy to learn it's very it's a really it, important part of the teaching exactly exactly and it's like it's honest as well and if you're like honest and open with your students um most of them will give you sort of like the the time and they'll be understanding especially if you go back and you research that grammar point and you come back with some prepared material yeah. um but it, it comes down to sort of like the honesty and the trust that you've got with your students yes totally yeah Okay, so um, let's move on to professional development and financial considerations of becoming an IELTS trainer. Um, mm -hmm. So one resource that's really good is, again, from IELTS.org. What they do is they offer scholarships for students uh, and researchers to look into elements of the language and the test and how they can be improved, um, what can uh, what's working right now and these are a really good resource to find out but well, to improve your teaching yeah it, that's a really good idea ben and that's something that i'm going to look at because it was something i'm sort of was on my radar but i don't know much about it mm. but i do read a lot about the exam and i think you know you those on the professional journals um and there's a lot of stuff online or even actual magazines um mm -hmm. reading about what other teachers are doing what's working for other teachers your style, your class, how to challenge yourself. And mm -hmm. there's been a lot about this um, as we've all been teaching remotely uh, exactly. recently. Exactly. And there's webinars, there's all sorts of stuff you can get involved in. Just yeah. 
keep yourself on the on track and to learn obviously exactly there is a big community and a very active uh, there's a ton of teachers on twitter uh, and on linkedin as well and yeah. as i said yeah very active a lot of them are very keen to share and we're talking native english speakers non-native english speakers as a as a mix a mix of everybody there and so next point i want to mention was that after teaching ielts um you can go into being an examiner i don't mean yeah um sorry you can become you can go into becoming an examiner but there is one catch once you become an examiner is that you cannot teach ielts when you are an examiner Exactly, because there's a conflict of interest there. Obviously, you know too much about the inside track. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there is one little sort of like, you you cannot be an examiner. Well, you cannot say you're an examiner and teach at the same time. Or you cannot say uh, you're a teacher and be an examiner. I think there's no, a... <laughs> so I, I know for a fact that some IELTS examiners are teaching, but they just cannot mention it. Uh, they can't mention the fact they're examiners as well. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, being an examiner is hard. You need, you are, I mean, so, and so it should be. You know, you are, you give a, you get a lot of training. It takes a long mm -hmm. time to be an examiner. You get a lot of training. Mm -hmm. uh, you're tested on your, or your, obviously, how good you are at grading. And it's really important to, to reassure everybody that the examiners are, very well qualified uh, the essays are double marked um, the speaking uh, examining is rigorously checked as well to make sure the examiner is fair and marking you correctly mm -hmm. and the examiners have to recertify every two years yeah uh, so yeah. the the standards are high and the, that gives you the yeah the reassurance that you're you're it's valid Exactly, exactly. And yeah, I think reassurance is the right word there for the students because a lot of them they, you, um, they can get frustrated and, you know, they start looking for ex reasons for why they're not getting this band seven. And, you know, I've heard stories about certain exam centers being easier or being harder than others mm. but i think that's just um it's just going to drain your energy if you take that route and yeah. i think the best way forward is just to trust in the system and yeah and put your energy into your own preparation rather than searching online for myths of of easy exam senders and so on and so forth it's just a waste of energy just trust Thank the you, system Bruce. and yeah. divert yeah. your energy to your own preparation Exactly, yeah, that's just like looking for excuses, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, just moving on to the last thing, that the um, being, once you sort of like become an IELTS teacher, in my opinion, um, you're head and shoulders above the rest because um, I was saying to Daphne before that, uh, or we were saying before in the tutorial that, you know, a lot of English teachers, they'll be teaching children in the morning, business English in the uh, in the midday and IELTS in the evening and doing it this way um, you're only going to be average in all three teaching aspects whereas if you specialize in one of them which is what we've all done here at IELTSpodcast.com day in day out you're getting deeper into the subject you're learning it to a higher level of confidence uh, you're making much more progress you're getting feedback from the students and you're going to be able to um, well teach much more effectively by specializing in one area yeah i think that's absolutely right and 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 you know when you when you, you need to travel and you you can travel all over the world and you've got that qualification um you know you can say you know i specialize in ielts and it's a really uh, a lot of people want this exam and uh, it's great to be able to help them on their journey exactly yeah exactly great point there great point okay that's everything from daphne and myself for today uh, but remember to check out IELTSpodcast.com. You can sign up for some IELTS materials there. And there's the online course as well. And soon, I think we might be reopening our teacher training 
course we closed it because it was full and we didn't have enough time uh, with the teachers but that will be reopening some point this year and also we are relaunching the online course as well so keep an eye out for that and if you're in lockdown um it seems we're around the not around the corner but it does seem like it, here in europe we've kind of gone through lockdown and it's there's sort of a, a light at the end of the tunnel and we're seeing that light now. So if you're in India or any other countries that's still in strict lockdown and it seems like complete chaos, just keep moving forward. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and you will get there. It's just a matter of time. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely right. And keep going, everyone. We're here. We're going to work with you all the time. Exactly. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. IELTSPodcast.com.